All righty. Good afternoon, everyone. We have the two guys in red shirts on a choppy market day. Uh, we've got a lot going on this week. Matt, before we get into the markets, how have you been? How have things been going? You doing good? How are you? Yeah, no, can't complain. Was at a uh, conference last week in Boston, my hometown. Always Ooh. like uh, to go up there. So, so far as, and the Patriots won this weekend. So, <laughs> so good. I love it. I love, you know, and that's a good way to start off the week. Yeah. A good, a good mindset, especially going into a week like this. And uh, we were discussing beforehand CPI data coming out. And it seems a lot of people are wanting to talk election, election, election on that. But we still have all these key data components. And it seems a lot of people are overlooking the fact that we're in a diesel shortage. Uh, what do you think about the econ data more than the election? What do you think about this data coming out in that diesel shortage? Yeah, I noticed that over the weekend. I think that's I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with energy. So I think that that's a big thing. Uh, you know, we're looking at um, some stocks and some preferreds in that area to maybe play. Um, we weren't the only ones, unfortunately. And what I was looking at ran up a little bit. So <laughs> I'll wait for it to come back down before I get in. Um, you know, and then I also, you know, speaking of energy, noticed, you know, a couple comments from Biden, one about coal and and the other about uh, no more oil drilling. So uh, some real interesting stuff going on with energy and, and really do think that traditional and alternative energy and, and the things that are surrounding it, you know, the EVs and the charging stations and all that, I think that's where a lot of the action long or short is gonna be in this market. So, um, you know, throw in some news and it makes it even more interesting. You know, I can agree with you on that too. Uh, it seems that this, uh, uh, you know, I'll say this diesel shortage is it both a, uh, a detriment and an opportunity for, for the EV company, because one, they got to have diesel to get those components to build the EV vehicles until we get to that area. But uh, on the EV side of things, if we are coming into, how should I say, um, more regular, shortages on both gasoline, distillates, all, all of the usuals out of the barrel there. Uh, this is the opportunity for them to step in and say, hey, we can relieve that stress. But uh, let's say we do flip on Tuesday with everything coming through. Do you think we're going to be in an environment to allow for the government subsidies to allow Rivian, to allow uh, EVgo, the rest of these to actually start to step in to the transit space and be able to relieve that diesel stress? So I, I, I don't think so. I mean, you know, everything that we're seeing and I think everyone is seeing is, you know, more of a red wave, hence the uh, the, the red shirts, I guess, that, uh, there we go. Yep. <laughs> that, that we're wearing. Um, so really looks like more gridlock than anything else. You know, if you've got, you know, Republican Congress, Democratic president, chances are not a whole heck of a lot gets done. So, and that brings up a question. Steven's been talking about, I've had some other people talk about that gridlock coming into the market. Uh, traditionally, the markets tend to be okay with gridlock. At least we kind of know where things are. Do you think that's going to be the same aspect since now we have so many people that are, well, they're not Wall Street professionals overall. They've never been into a real trading gridlock environment. Do you think uh, that old notion is still going to hold true as if we do move forward in the gridlock? Yeah, see, I, I, I think gridlock is going to be fine with the market. Um, and these days, more so than maybe other times, just from the standpoint that to me, it, it's all about the Fed. Um, mm -hmm. And then maybe secondarily and, and way, way down on the spectrum, is is China going to reopen or are they not going to reopen? Um, you know, anything else? I just, from a market standpoint, don't think the market cares. You know, what's going on with the Fed right now just dwarfs everything. You know, and, and that's that's a very important point. I mean, China opening up, getting rid of that whole zero COVID tendency that they've had now. Um, with the the market seems to not care about a lot of things except for. 30 seconds to two minutes overall. Are we more of an, uh, well, I mean, we are in a sentiment driven market, but do you think people are paying more attention to the verbiage that is being said 
or the presumption of cause after that verbiage is said? So we're in an entirely different environment. You know, we've never had, you know, when the Fed would have a meeting, they'd have a meeting, they announce their decision, and then we don't hear from them again. You know, now every day you've got Fed heads coming out. And you've got to plan your trading day now around this. Like, oh, uh, you know, Kashkari speaking at 11. You know, it's 1055. I was going to buy Tesla, but oh, I, I, I got to hold off. Because if Kashkari comes out and says, I want to see this market lower, Tesla's going to tank. So it's, it's, it's entirely different, driven by these guys going back and forth. You know, you saw it on Friday. You had a jobs number that maybe was like, hey, maybe not a Fed pivot. Then you had some Fed heads say, well, you know, maybe we don't want to raise interest rates as much. And, you know, you're off to the races. It makes it extremely difficult to figure out what to do. You know, and, and it seems more people now, not just with their commentary on interest rates, but it seems that people are also concerned with the whole insider trading from the Fed. Uh, I don't know if you watched the reporter that when Powell was talking, but my God, the man stumbled like a 1 a.m. college drunk when he was asked about that. And uh, it, it makes me wonder, um, do you think people are going to start looking at congressional trades harder than they did before and either following or doing the opposite of those trades. What are your thoughts on that? So, you know, if they're not looking at it from the standpoint of regulation, they should be, uh, you know, every day you're like, hey, so-and-so senator, so-and-so Fed guy, you know, right before whatever, you know, I, I just saw a news story that a bunch of a bunch of people bought defense stocks right before the invasion. You know, do you think maybe they were briefed? Maybe, yeah. Um, you know, so they should be looking at it from a regulation standpoint. Following it's difficult because, yeah, those trades are public, but they're delayed. And, yeah. and that's the problem. You know, if, if I could find out in real time, Nancy Pelosi is buying a defense stock. Yeah, I want to be in on that trade because she knows something I don't know. But if I found out 45 days ago she bought a defense stock, probably doesn't help me a whole heck of a lot, except to piss me off that she got <laughs> to, you know, make money in Northrop Grumman and I didn't. Yeah, I got to agree with you. So for those uh, young app developers out there, uh, if you could figure out a way to help us out with that, please do, you know, heck, I'd pay a good shiny penny to figure out what, uh, what they're all doing on that aspect. And yeah. With the delay on information, Matt, right, right now, where do you think is the, for lack of a better term, the healthiest place that people can go to to get good good information that they can transcribe into not only their trading, but their, their long-term ideas about the markets. I mean, typically with a Republican sector of things, we see a little bit more friendlier business environments, and that's historical knowledge overall. But right now we have such a fast access to all types of different, different information to the point of even where Bloomberg, Reuters, uh, the, the whole gambit of them are having to make redactions five to 10 minutes later. Well, that's cute. But as soon as that news hits the market, trades have already been placed in on that. Doesn't matter if it's an algo or an individual. So in your opinion, I mean, how, how can we cipher through the bullshit? So awesome question. And I wish I had an easy answer for you. Yeah. You know, Wall Street's no help. I mean, how often do you see, you know, XYZ announced bad earnings? You know, they're down 30 percent and Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch downgrade them from strong buy to sell. It's like, uh, thanks. But maybe the day before you should have done that. You know, financial media, you know, the, you're you're talking about reporters writing, quoting people. You don't know what the people they're quoting have an axe to grind. The best source of information I have found is Twitter. Unfortunately, there. So there are some really, really skilled people on Twitter and, and we use it. I mean, every day I've got a watch list. There's only so many stocks I can watch. So there are certain people on Twitter I follow and, you know, they may say, hey, you know, I'm looking at XYZ. Okay, that might prompt me. I'm going to look at XYZ. I'm not going to buy it because you're buying it. But, you know, I can't watch everything. If you're trying to watch everything, you're watching nothing. So I think really it's, 
educating yourself about financial markets so you can kind of sift through the bowl and then finding some really, really good people on Twitter to follow. That to me is the best source of, you know, quick information. Okay. I don't want you to give away any trade secrets or something, but you got one person you'd recommend for people to follow on the Twitter? Um, let me give you two. Ooh. So there's Miss Izzy, I think is awesome. And then there's special situations news that I think is awesome. I I've got special situations as well on there. You know, it amazes me overall, the access to information that is available. My God, if, if we'd have had this when we first started, I mean, don't get me, you know, messenger was great back in the day, but now the fact that something can happen in Libya, 13 seconds later, it's across the deck and I'm able to go into a uh, Honeywell, Raytheon, whatever. It, it, it amazes me overall on that. But how do how do you avoid the information overload? It's tough. You know, that's why I mean, I keep myself every day to a watch list of 24 stocks, because, again, I found that if it's any more than that, I'm, I'm watching nothing. You know, I'm, I'm missing, you know, I'm watching my eighth screen and I'm missing something on my first screen. And then it's it's tamping down my information sources to what I got going on. So, you know, I'm hooked into Miss Izzy's Discord. I'm hooked into special situations Discord. There are a few other people I follow on Twitter and I'll look at that stuff. And, and, and that's it. You know, I try not to look at too much beyond that because that'll just drive you crazy. And I, yeah, I got CNBC on in the background. That's, you know, that's more, if, if stuff starts moving, maybe they're going to say, you know, hey, this happened. Ch usually it's muted because Twitter will tell me something's happening before CNBC is. Yeah, and it's at CNBC, the rest of them, they're nice for broad base, but at best, there's typically a five to eight minute delay. You know, on average, it's about a 10 to 15 for those that are, that are unaware on that. So, Matt, I want to be respectful of your time overall. We've got a lot moving forward into this week. What's your one piece of data advice for the new and medium traders that are, they were COVID traders and now they're starting to get into it, starting to get into the, some derivatives as well. What's your data advice for them as we move forward into this week? So we got CPI on Thursday, heavy cash into CPI. Because remember, that's an 830 number. If you're positioned the wrong way, you're kind of toast. <laughs> you know, you don't really have time to react to it. Um, you know, I'll probably be 100% cash or, you know, pretty close to it coming into that number. Anything else, you're just gambling. I like it. I like it. All right. So ladies and gentlemen. Risk management and knowing the fact of what econ reports are coming up. Do keep in mind, ladies and gents, too, that if you are playing options on there, you can only play those 930 to 4. So if you're deciding to try and hold a YOLO over uh, that data, look, you've got uh, you got bigger ones than me on that one because I do not hold into data like that. All right, well, Matt, where can people find you on that if they uh, if they want to learn more about what all you got going on? So TuttleCap.com is our website and at TuttleCap is our Twitter handle. I love it. I love it. Matt, thanks for dropping some great information today. I hope everything goes well for you on this week as we move forward and uh, manage that risk overall. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the next one. All right. See you later.